Good morning. Friends, we come today to celebrate the life of Novice Penguin. Today is a day of mixed emotions for many of us here. There is the heartache that we all feel when we lose a loved one, someone that we cared for and that cared for us in return. No longer can we feel Melba's touch, hear her voice, see her smile. And because of that, we hurt on the inside. Yet there is also, in some ways, a sense of relief. Melba's body is now at rest. The suffering of the last few months has been gone, is now gone. We know that she's better off, yet somehow we feel guilty for feeling that way. And there are some of us here this morning wishing that we had one more moment, one more minute, one more opportunity to just be able to say how much we loved her what she meant to us, and how she impacted our lives. The last few days for family and friends has been a roller coaster of emotions. The only one that I know that can help us make sense of all those conflicting emotions is our Father God. And I'd ask that you bow with me now as you go to him and pray. <coughs> Father God, the Lord of the living and the dead, we entrust Melba to you today. We know, Father, that she was faithful to you and that you will be, Father, faithful to her. But Father, we, we hurt and we mourn. And so we pray to you as the God of comfort and mercy, Father, to, to bring your presence to settle upon us, to be here in our midst, bring comfort, and yet to bring hope as well. Father, may you forever be praised. For his name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we do pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Melba's obituary begins this way. Melba J. Spangler, 81, Logansport, passed away on November the 13th, 2018, at Miller's Mary Manor. <coughs> Born on November the 3rd, 1937, in Indianapolis, she was the daughter of the late Paul and Ida Louise Elder Lowe. While working at the soda shop in Porter's Drug Store, she met a young man from Carroll County who soon became her frequent customer. The two fell in love and married on November the 26th, 1954, in Deer Creek, Indiana. She married Jerry Lee Spangler, who survives. The couple spent their entire married life in Logansport. Starting at age 18, Melba began her career as an assembler at RBM, working for 39 years. For over 60 years, Melba was a devoted member of the Wheatland Avenue United Methodist Church. She was always cheerful and volunteering especially when it came to preparing food. Melba had also held several offices at the church. Obituaries are nice in and of themselves. They tell us when a person was born and when that person died. And they also tell us a little bit about that person's life. But they fail in telling us who that person really is. So to help us understand who Melba really is this morning, I'm going to invite Andy to come up to share uh, some thoughts with you this morning. Yeah. I have some uh, prepared remarks from Melba's daughters and uh, also would like to extend a very heartfelt thank you to all of you for your support from Jerry uh, these last few days but also these last few weeks and months. Uh, he has felt your support, your kind gestures, and um, most mostly your prayers. And uh, speaking with Jerry last night, he was uh, 
wanting me to be sure and thank you all for that and for your presence here last night and today. Uh, as I said, I have some prepared remarks, first from eldest sister Nancy. Mom had me at a very young age, so she always said that we kind of grew up together. She felt like she made a lot of mistakes as a young mother, but I survived, and I think she did just fine. I was lucky to have Mom that I could talk to about anything. I'm sure there were times that I asked some tough questions, but she would always be honest with me. I'm so blessed that Mom instilled in all of us girls a love for family and holidays. Kind of a common theme here in the next few minutes. She always made our birthdays a special day. I have a July birthday, so it was sometimes too hot for her to bake a cake. And for many of you, you know that those were the olden days and not everybody had air conditioning. So if it was hot, you didn't want the oven going. One year, we went to the Amber's restaurant for my birthday celebration. Suddenly, here comes a waitress with a cake coming out from the kitchen and it had a sparkler in it. Nancy was embarrassed, but felt pretty special too. And Melba always made her daughters feel special. Mom and I both shared a love of math, and we would spend a lot of time discussing finances and taxes. We also spent a lot of time discussing books that we were reading. She loved to read, and Nancy finally was able to talk her into reading books from the library on her iPad. She was a lot like me. She had to have a book in her hands. However, she did get used to the idea and loved that she could pick out and return books from the convenience of her recliner. I'm so thankful that mom shared her love of Jesus with us girls. She wanted us to go to church and continue learning about Jesus. I know mom had a, a lot of wonderful years with her Wheatland Avenue church family. I'm certainly going to miss mom, but I know she is out of pain and in a better place. Until we meet again, I love you, mom. Nancy. And some thoughts from Lisa, the baby. Our mom was a factory worker by trade, but at home for us, she was a teacher. When Lisa was a senior in high school, she felt overwhelmed by a research paper assignment. She came home with a stack of library books and in tears telling her mom that she wouldn't be going to college since she couldn't figure out how to write a research paper. So Melba got to work, started skimming the books, reading poetry, making suggestions, presenting various ideas, and before long, Lisa was at the typewriter typing away, and you guessed it, she did go to college and graduated too, I believe. <laughs> Mom was at home a teacher of math and English, but most of all, it was life lessons that she taught. She's become the voice in our heads and here are some of the mom-isms that both Lisa and Lori came up with that keep playing over and over in their heads. Put God and family first. She would want that first on this list. Put something on that baby's head. <laughs> Lindsay, you've heard that. <laughs> Weather's turning, yes, keep that in mind. <laughs> Say please, thank you, and excuse me. Be a good and faithful wife, and she was. Put a jacket on when it's cold, even if you are sweaty. <laughs> All your food goes to the same place, so don't be afraid to mix it up <laughs> before it goes to that place. <laughs> Pop is a treat. Enjoy it. She told about when she and her siblings were kids. On Saturdays, their dad would take them all out and splurge a few cents for a pop for each of them. And they would make it last as long as they could. Laugh and retell funny stories like the one when Aunt Lisa shot the sheriff. <laughs> 
you want to share what that means no. now or later? <laughs> you will share later. Always wear nice undies because you never know when you might be in an accident. <laughs> Pastor Bill relates to that. <laughs> Pray for people. Put others before self. Visit your deceased relative's graves. Go to church and don't wear jeans or tennis shoes because it's God's house. Spend time with your friends. When mom was in the hospital, it was obvious that she was loved by her friends. It wasn't unusual for her to have 15 to 20 visitors in a day. And we've seen more evidence of that last night and here this morning. Play cards. Well, we knew she did plenty of that, and uh, it's probably all already getting started in heaven. Play with the little kids. Jesus said, let the children come to me. Every little girl, and for the little girls in here, make a note of this, every little girl should have a new pair of white shorts in the summer. <laughs> every little girl should get a new dress for Easter and Christmas. As Lori told me, she always made sure of that, but it was never about getting herself a new dress either. Always about the girls. Play memory games. Keep the house picked up. It's up to you now, Jerry. And if you need to, set the timer and play beat the clock if you need to, to help you get it done. Watch game shows and go places, vacations, mom and daughter trips, plays, concerts. Dance, be a generous giver, bargain shop, and be active. She went to aerobics in the 80s and was going to aqua size three times a week before she became ill. I have more of these momisms I'll share in just a moment, but I want to make this a bit of an interactive ceremony this morning. Is that okay? Nice. Have you ever done that? Interactive? Okay. Bill's done it. Uh, one of my early memories of Melba when I first started dating uh, Lori, and I'd like you to participate in this with me. Please play along. Everybody form a kiss. Everybody? Everybody kiss on your lips. Now, extend those lips as far from your face as you can. Way out. Very good, Dave. Thank you. That's the Melba Spangler could kiss. And back in 1979, when I met Lori, I had never seen such a thing. It was, it was amazing. <laughs> and then one day, that way out there extended pair of lips came at me. <laughs> and I thought, what do I do? Melt in her arms or turn and run? <laughs> I stayed there, and I dealt with it. <laughs> Boy, those lips. <laughs> By the way, do the lips one more time. Extend them way out, way out. Everybody, now turn and kiss somebody next to you. <laughs> Nobody can extend them like she did. More mom-isms. Lots of things are mind over matter, including being ticklish. I suspect when you girls wouldn't go to sleep, she just said sleeping can be challenging, but you can't sleep with your eyes open or while up walking around. <laughs> that was her way of saying, get to bed. I like it. Bake Christmas cookies with the kids. And what an example of that she was. Baking Christmas cookies with her kids and then with her kids' friends over at the house. She wanted them to know that experience and enjoy it throughout their lifetime, too. Be cautious. Always be cautious. For example, don't drive too fast. 
<laughs> Stay in the shallow end <laughs> and wear your seatbelt. Sit down and eat supper at the, tam at the table as a family. Support your family. Go see your brother sing, which she loved to do. Go to sporting events, shows, dance recitals, graduations, weddings, and family reunions. Celebrate, especially on holidays, and call it Independence Day, not the 4th of July, for those who protect our freedom. Follow the Indy 500 and cheer for the drivers you drew in the family pool. <laughs> Marriage is for better or worse, till death do you part. Love deeply, kiss, hug, and say, I love you. And even when she was on a ventilator, she found a way to say, I love you. And live by the golden rule, as Melba did, treating others as you would like to be treated. <coughs> you know, it's really hard to believe that Melba will no longer be on this earth with us because for so many years, she has been a real rock for her family. But in her time of need, her family was her rock. First time I saw her at St. Vincent's in Indianapolis, she was singing the praises to me of her daughters and Jerry, and how they were constantly at her side, caring for her, praying for and praying with her. It meant the world to her. So now it's all up to us to carry on. We'll do that in various ways, but we can make it a little more easy by keeping Melba in our memory and in our hearts. Great-grandson Andrew says he'll miss Grandma Spangler's birthday cake at Christmas each year, and then singing happy birthday to Jesus. So the plan is there will be a birthday cake Andrew has promised to help decorate it, keeping her memory alive. Can't wait to see that. Cooper, another great grandson, says he'll think of her when he enjoys scrambled eggs with cheese because when he stayed with Grandma Melba, that's what she made him for breakfast, and he likes that stuff. Great granddaughter Gretchen appreciated grandma attending her school events and dance recitals. And you know it's going to be sad at the next one when she's not there. But hold on to those memories when she was there because she was smiling and enjoying it very, very much. Grandson James can remember the trips to the Logan Sport Library when he visited because grandma, always looking out for others, knew that he'd like to go to the library and pick out dinosaur books. And granddaughter Aubrey can always look back on the Christmas cookie baking party with her friends that Grandma hosted for her. She always remembers because it was fun, but then when the cookies were in the oven baking, she broke out a Richard Simmons country <laughs> line dancing workout video. <laughs> doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> How to impress your teenage friends. <laughs> Sister Pat, when you need a smile, just break out in song. Maybe Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. You know, it was almost 70 years ago that that was a radio hit for the first time. And Melba taught Pat her baby sister, how to sing it. And you struggled. It was a challenge, especially saying reindeer, not reindeers. You can break out in that song any time of the year. It drove her nuts that you couldn't get it right, didn't you? <laughs> Something else that drove Melba was her faith. Her faith walk lasted her entire lifetime. And as Brother Dave says, nobody was a better example of living her life in the image of Jesus than Melba. 
So day to day, when things get a little difficult, we can all remember a few of those momisms, or maybe your own special memories that you had with her. Don't forget to bring back those memories. Bring a smile and lighten our load. And mom, grandma, Melba, she was pretty good at that. That kid, great uh, honor and tribute to Melba. We would like to open the floor to anyone who would like to share a story or a, or a memory. Is there any here, anybody here that would like to, to say something real quick? Linda? It's not going to exactly be quick. <laughs> okay. July 3rd, 1980 was a very special day in history. <laughs> Besides being the day I was born, <laughs> it was also the day that Melba Spangler became a grandma. As I have spent the last few days reflecting on my relationship with my grandma, I have been amazed at how many memories I have with her. And I've realized just how lucky I am to have had so many times with her. One of my earliest memories that I have with her was a weekend that my parents went and left me overnight and I remember that I was very upset that they left me <laughs> and uh, but as the weekend on, went on that I had so much fun with her but I remember that I didn't want to leave when it was over <laughs> it was a beautiful fall weekend and I remember taking a walk with her to collect leaves and then we came home and made really awesome placemats out of wax paper. <laughs> uh, I think about those every time that the fall leaves start to change. I don't think that it's a coincidence that fall is my favorite season. When I was little, Grandma started the tradition of taking me to the Children's Museum in Indianapolis and then out to eat. The first uh, couple of times that we went, she took me to this place called Paramount Pizza. And there was an awesome piano or something like that that came up out of the floor. And someone would play while all these bells and whistles would play all over the walls and bubbles blew all around. And I remember it being pure magic. <laughs> over the years, she continued to take me and my cousins and then my kids and Aubrey's kids to the Children's Museum and then on to Chuck E. Cheese. Can you imagine a grandma at Chuck E. Cheese? <laughs> a great grandma at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> and even though there were some teenage years when I was less than thrilled to go, <laughs> I now cherish each and every one of those trips. There are a million more memories of times that I spent with her, like drinking cup after cup of coffee at Beef and Boards or the time that we went to Disney World. Not many people can say that they rode Space Mountain with their grandma, <laughs> but I did, all while she screamed about something about peeing in her pants. <laughs> she did it. <laughs> there were many times when I was a teenager and young adult that my grandma and I didn't always see eye to eye. Sometimes it was pretty bad and I didn't really understand it. I never really got the answers about that until this, just this week. As I thought about her and those times that we didn't always get along, I realized something. So much of my personality comes directly from her and my mom. <laughs> she was feisty. She was independent. She was a planner and an organizer. She liked things her way. <laughs> she was sensitive at times and she was super strong at times. She had anxiety sometimes and she loved to laugh and have fun. She loved to travel and try new things. She was a hard worker and loved being a mom. These are all things that I learned from her. 
Then there comes the most important thing that I learned from her. When I was a little girl, she <coughs> took me to church one Sunday. And during the children's message, they gave us a little fake flower and told us to give it to the person that first told us about Jesus. I gave my grandma that flower, and I still remember how proud she was of it. Her faith was always important to her, and now I'm proud to say that I do ministry every day. My grandma, I thank you for all the memories and for helping make me who I am today. I love you. <coughs> Is there anyone else who would like to share? I know that each and every person here in the room has uh, has memories of uh, of Melba, and I would ask that sometime during the day that uh, you help share those uh, uh, with the family, uh, or that you do share those with the family uh, sometime during the day to help them celebrate uh, Melba's life. I met the other day with Jerry and the girls and Pat and to talk about today's service. I asked them what word or phrase comes to mind when you think of Melba, your mom, grandma, or sister. Let me share the words that came. The first word was selfless. She was a woman who knew how to give herself in a way that mattered and touched lives. Faithful. You've heard those words of how her faith uh, strengthened her uh, throughout her life. Loving, caring, compassionate, supportive, smart. As I listened to the family talk, there were three words that came to my mind that I think describe Elba perfectly. First, faith. Her faith in God caused her to love with a deep abiding love. Family. Family very important to Mel. You have been touched by a woman who knew how to love and who out knew how to give and to give an example of how we all should live. And people the crowd here today, those who came through last night, to show how much your mom touched people. The memories that each of us have will come over the next few days, weeks, months, even years from now, something will happen that will bring back one of those memories of Melbourne. Perhaps the memory will come when you find yourself making plans for a trip and you remember how your mom had everything perfectly planned along the way, except the cookies that never seem to make the entire trip. Maybe it'll be when you see an advertisement for a gospel concert and you think mom and dad would have loved that. Perhaps it'll be when you sit down to a sun Sunday dinner fried chicken and potatoes and for a minute, moment you see your mom at the stove. Perhaps it would be when you take your children to the children's museum and you remember making those trips with your grandmother. Maybe it would be Christmas when you remember the cake with the candle, the singing of happy birthday to Jesus. Maybe it'll be when you hear someone sing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and you remember <laughs> Melba telling you that she taught Pat how to sing that song. And according to Melba, not only how to sing that song, but everything that Pat knows. <laughs> Perhaps it'll be one day when you've taken time off to help a family member and you hear your mom say, that's what family's for. Whenever and wherever the memories come, it is my prayer that God will use them to help you celebrate Melba's life again and to bring peace to your hearts. 
as we prepare to go into God's Word, I'd ask that you repeat uh, or pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to share with you the words of John, the 14th chapter, this morning. Jesus is about to go to his Father. He's going to leave his disciples behind. It will be their responsibility to continue to share the gospel message with the world. Just as Melba leaves this family to continue to set the example of faithfulness to a world that needs to know Jesus Christ. Jesus knew that their hearts would be broken they would miss him. And so he said these words, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. That was the anchor upon which Melba based her entire life. It was the anchor that kept her through the storms, through the ups and downs, even through the illness, towards the end of her life. An anchor that would hold firm regardless of what came. And an anchor that I'm sure, I'm sure she would tell this family, hang on to today. Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior, died for our sins. You've heard many times this morning referenced Melba's faith. We know not only where Jesus went, but where Melba is today. Our hearts are broken. We miss her. But for Melba, today is a day of rejoicing because she lived her entire life to stand in the presence of Jesus Christ, her Lord and King. Today she celebrates there. And she longs, she longs for this family to join her. Just as you and I long for that day of resurrection <coughs> when Jesus Christ will return again so that we might see her have faith. Jesus Christ has gone to prepare a place. Melba now has taken her place. May we be comforted through the words of Christ as we put our faith and our trust in God alone. To bow with me as we go to our Father in prayer. Father God, you are the great and the mighty God. You are the everlasting. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth and all that is within them. You are indeed the Lord of the living and the dead. And Father, it is with confidence that we come, thanking you for Melba's life, thanking you, Father, for welcoming her into your arms. It is also with confidence, Father, that we come before you asking for your peace and your mercy upon us as we mourn. Give us that longing, Father, for that day of resurrection when we will rejoice again as family and as friends in your presence. Father, we thank you for Melba. And I thank you for 
Father, how she touched these family and these friends here. And how, Father, she set the example in following you. Father, may all praise be yours today. For in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we do pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Thank you, Pastor Bill, and thank each one of you for your attendance here today at Melba's funeral. It means so much to Jerry and her family. We will be traveling next to Hopewell Cemetery in Deer Creek, and if you haven't already parked in procession and would like to join us, please pull your car in line and safely follow the car in front of you through all intersections. You may turn on your headlights and your blinkers to signify that you are part of the group. The Logan Sport Police Department will be escorting us through town. As we dismiss today, we will be dismissing from the back of the room, so you may come up to the front if you wish, using the side aisle. <coughs> Jacob will be dismissing you one row at a time. Each of you have a special and unique connection with Melba, and each of you have a special and unique handprint. As you leave here today, I invite you to leave your handprint on her casket as a symbol of the way she touched your life. All of your fingerprints blended together will be a symbol of the love and friendship that you shared, which will never be forgotten. Thank you. The eagle is soaring above it. It simply uses the storm to lift it higher. It rises on the winds to bring the storm. When the storms of life come upon us, and all of us will experience them, we can rise above them by setting our minds and our belief toward God. The storms do not have to overcome us. We can allow God's power to lift us above them. God enables us to ride the winds of the storm that bring sickness, tragedy, failure, and disappointment in our lives. We can soar above the storm. Remember, it is not the burdens of life that weigh us down. It is how we handle them. The Bible says, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. Isaiah 40, 31. Then the piece ends with these words, and God will raise you up on eagles' wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. As we lay Melba down to her final resting spot, until the day of resurrection, I want to share with you two scriptures that I believe Melba would want to, uh, me to share with you today. First is from Romans 8, verses 38 and 39. It says this, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the presence, present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The second is from 2 Timothy, 9th chapter, verses 7 to 8. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing to bow with me as we go to our Father in prayer. Our most gracious and heavenly Father, eternal Lord, we come before you and I pray that, Father, you will be with this family and friends in these next few moments. As, Father, we say our final goodbye to the body of Melba. But we entrust her soul and her spirit to you. And, Father, we just pray for your peace and for your comfort. Bind us together in your love, for it is the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, we do pray. Amen. Amen.
Master. This completes the service here at the graveside.